My name is Faith. And I'm Olivia. And we examine the interplay between squirrel foraging dynamics and plastic pollution. Microplastic pollution is an increasing concern among scientists, especially as human plastic consumption continues to grow. This pollution directly impacts the environment and organisms. Urban squirrels that forage from anthropogenic sources, such as trash cans, consume plastic when searching for food, which ends up in their gut. We have observed squirrels foraging from garbages on Concordia's campus and have found plastic pieces that have obviously been chewed on by squirrels. We seek to characterize the plastic composition of anthropogenic food sources on campus and understand how this may influence the amount of microplastics that end up in their guts. We predict that over half of squirrel foraging material will be plastic and that urban squirrels will contain more microplastic than those in rural habitats. So to characterize the amount of plastics accessible to squirrels, we surveyed four outdoor trash cans around campus by collecting all the contents um, each night for one week and then weighing and categorizing those items. And then in order to observe squirrel behaviors, we trapped and equipped squirrels with radio collars. We then used radio telemetry to track and identify individuals and then characterize their observed behaviors using an epigram. The third part of this project was to examine the prevalence of microplastics in urban and rural squirrels. We first had to extract gastrointestinal tracts from all squirrel samples. We then digested the each GI tract by mixing it with potassium hydroxide and letting it sit on a hot plate for about 48 hours. After the digestion was complete, we filtered the sample to extract the remaining organic material and microplastics. We then took each filter and placed it under a dissection microscope to count and characterize the microplastics. We found that about 33% of surveyed trash consisted of plastic. Um, and additionally, evidence of squirrels directly consuming plastic includes chew marks on garbage cans, um, plastic nesting materials, and holes in dining service takeout containers where squirrels chew through the um, containers to get to the food inside. Here are the results from our microplastic analysis. Um, pictured above are the three types of microplastics we found, found in our samples. A fiber is on the left, a piece of foam in the middle, and a granule on the right. Fibers made up an overwhelming percentage of our total microplastics that we found. Pictured below is a box plot comparing the number of microplastics we found in urban versus rural squirrels. We standardized the number of microplastics by the GI tract mass of each squirrel. The difference between urban and rural squirrels was not significant with a p-value of 0.123. So although the proportion of plastic was uh, less than the predicted 50%, there was a lot of evidence of squirrels chewing on plastic containers. Most of these containers were waste from campus services, such as the dining center and plastic items from campus convenience stores. We seek to use this data to motivate and inform plastic reduction policy on campus. Um, additionally, squirrels have been frequently observed foraging through garbages and eating food scraps from plastic containers, both through in-person observations and on trail cams. This data will be spatially analyzed using ArcGIS. We found microplastics in all of our urban and rural squirrel samples, and this suggests that there is microplastic pollution in both urban and rural ecosystems and indicates the pervasiveness of human activities. As of now, we have a small sample size for this portion of the study, and we believe that this could be one explanation for the high levels of variability within our data. And there are a few directions that this future will continue to go in. Um, first, we plan to continue the microplastic analysis to increase our sample size and reliability of data. We also plan on conducting more trash can audits, continuing behavioral observations, and spatially analyzing food sources with nesting locations and individual sightings. And then listed down, be down below here are the acknowledgements and literature cited. Thank you for watching our presentation.